Hey, legends and super legends. Paul is here in the studio. Hello. So today, Paul won a bike, a giant Propel 2015 model. There it is in all its grandeur. Make sure I get a good shot of the bike. There, Giant Propel is an aero frame. You can see the little cutout here for the tire to go in. See how I'm following what works really well. And he's got 175 cranks. I don't know what brand that is. That F, that's Shimano. Yeah. So Shimano 175 cranks. I'm gonna come real close to it so they can see it. And he's got uh, so it, it's equipped with 105 Shimano 105. It, it was a raffle at where he works at United Airlines, and he was helping the people from the Harvey flood. And so he bought a raffle ticket and he won. It came with a saddle, which he's going to change. Giant is branding all these components. So they call it Giant. The saddle is called Giant. Let me go over it like this. This is what is great about follow mode. You see that? Mm -hmm. So Giant, the Giant saddle, even the, the stem is, is branded Giant. And the bars are branded Giant. It says Contact on there. Let me turn it this way. It says Contact, but it's a Giant brand. It's got Shimano 105. It's a Giant Propel. Let me get the brand name. Giant Propel, right there. Okay. The colors are beautiful. Paul loves blue. They got a lot of red on the side and silver, but the blue is the main color. And it's just beautiful. The brake is, is different. It's got like a cable here. Instead of a metal housing, like other brakes, they got a, the brake cable runs through the two caliper. And the cool thing about this is, these are direct drive brakes. They're screwed into the frame. Your frame has to be equipped to take this. There is a bolt here, and there is a bolt on this side. They're called direct drive. They have more stopping power because of how they're fixed to the frame. So supposedly it's an improvement over our standard caliper. You know, dual calipers work close, but the direct drive is supposed to be even more positive as far as the feel you get when you brake. And it's the same thing on the front. It's screwed into the frame. So your frame has to be equipped to have that holder there and the same holder on this side. So the, so the brakes are screwed into the frame on the side and then they just run the cable over it. So I think he'll be able to put a 25 there. There's a little bit of room. Yeah, 25 should fit. And then it will just fit in that little space right here. Very aero. You can see the front of the bike. It's an aerodynamic bike. The cables are internally routed. You see them going here, inside the body of the frame. And then they slide out over here. I'm gonna make sure I get that. There we go, that's good. I wanna make sure I get that for it so they can see. So it slides out there and it comes out to the brake. Which is a funny thing about this internal cable routing because you only don't see the cable for that distance. <laughs> you know? And so, uh, let me see the front. So the front, yeah, it's, it's an unusual braking system that they use because uh, even Christian's bike had the same, has the same setup. I'm trying to wake up this frame screen here you can see how the cable routes from the front and then goes to the side because the brakes are behind the fork for aerodynamic you know benefits in the front in the back they're in a the standard position and the tires they're using the giants also yeah giant brands their tires also it's called giant i hope this thing will pick it up giant flat guard whatever that is pr3 they're branding everything the, the wheels are branded for Giant also. The PA-2 is a Giant brand. So they're branding everything. Let me show that here. You see the brand. That, that's, a lot of the manufacturers do that, which is fine. So yeah, so uh, Paul's gonna change, go to the saddle. Paul's gonna change the saddle. Paul's already ordered his uh, Sellers and P for this. And this will be removed. Um, and then we're going to mount your pedals on here. And then uh, you're going to have to get some bottle cages. Right. Uh, for a bike like this, with all the blue, uh, since you like blue, I think if, they, if you could find blue painted, like blue carbon cages, mm -hmm. would probably look really good if you can match this blue. 
the stuff on his front. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Uh, because you, you're not crazy about the red, so don't get right. red cages right. and accent the red. If anything, you want to emphasize the blue. So okay. I, would, I would get blue carbon cages. If you wanted to do carbon cages, I mean, you can do any kind of cages you want. Uh, right. See right there. See that? It's mm -hmm. a little lighter there. Some scuff mark. Anyway, but I like how they did this to where it's, they have the, the attachment for the bottle cage is already built into the frame. So you're not really screwing it. Most of the carbon frames will do that. The treads are already in there. Okay. So they basically put like a tread insert when they're building the frame. Mm -hmm. They put the carbon around it. Mm -hmm. So what you're screwing into are metal treads. Okay. Yeah, so when you take off this nut, mm -hmm. what is screwed into are metal treads that they, they put in there and they wrap carbon around it. Mm -hmm. So you basically have a place that is solid, just like any bike, for your for this bottle cage holder to go into. Okay. You, know, you can see the kind of space you got down here. So you got plenty of room for any size bottle that you want. I'm going to measure the size of the frame and then measure the top two, and we can kind of write those down. And I see they put an L there for large frame. You see? Yeah, that's just their sizing, and you know I don't pay that much attention to it. Mm -hmm. They have they have small, medium, large, and XL. Mm -hmm. This is a large. And so, in their speed, what it does, it, it, that way they can only make four sizes, throw it out on the market, and get people to fit them. Mm -hmm. That's why this thing is long. This blade is very long. You, can, mm -hmm. you know, they do that so they can fit a lot of people. Back in the day, they had to make more sizes. Now they don't do that anymore. So I think that's, that's good. I just wanted to show the guys the, the frame. I don't see there's anything else. We're going to make adjustments, guys, to the stem. When we do, we're going to set him up. That will be a different video when we get him set up to make sure that he has the extension he needs. He's ordered his bars because he doesn't care for these shallow bars. He likes deep drop bars. He's got big hands. These bars are for people that have smaller hands. And some people just prefer these. Uh, so that's the thing about bikes when you're buying them. Uh, you have to make sure that if you get the option of choosing components, that you know what components work for you. He doesn't like this tape because it's kind of foamy. That's okay, but he's got his tape on. So we're gonna the bars are gonna be changed. The stem may be changed, but if this length works. We'll stay with that because it's a nice looking stem. Uh, you know, it's just really really clean cut. The saddle's going, and then he's got his pedals. So we'll do that on a different video. We'll do your setup on this bike, but. Just wanted to introduce Paul's giant pro pack. Fifth, what seventy five dollars, fifty dollars for the for the for the lot for the, the ticket, and then twenty five dollars to pay to pick it up when he got to the airport to get it. Yeah, so that was pretty good. Seventy five dollars for top of the line. That's giant propel. I mean, that's pretty up there. I saw the specs that you sent. Yeah. This is a seventy two point five. We'll verify. Put it on the on the thing when we do your fit. But. Uh, while we're doing this, let me just measure it real quickly for those, those are the guys who want to the, the dimensions. Some of the guys are into numbers. So basically what we're doing here is we're going from the center of the bottom bracket. Use the center of the crank here. Right there. And go up to where these tubes meet. Okay, so you see what it, you see here? I'm not going to measure up here. I'm going to measure here. Okay. Right there, okay? Mm -hmm. They measure to here. Mm -hmm. So, the, the actual size of any frame is where the two tubes meet. And the two tubes, the center is, and I even saw it on your spec, Paul. Mm -hmm. They call it a 57.5. Mm -hmm. This bike is not a 58. 57.5 is a manufacturer size. You see it? Right. I don't know if you can tell from there. Yeah, I can. Top is 57.5. Your bike is 56.5. Okay. Okay? Where the red line, I'm measuring the, 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 this red line here, mm -hmm. right down there. So this, the top the, part or the bottom? Right here. Okay. Right there. That's the right. center of this tube. Okay. Up here is 57.5. This okay. frame is 57 and a half top. Okay. Somebody rounded it up to 58 to tell you that, you know, it's a half a centimeter, five millimeters. This is 57.5 center to top. Okay. It's 56.5 right here. That's where these. That's the center of this tube. Okay. So, so the actual frame size is 56.5. Okay. 
doesn't matter. You can ride a 58 or whatever, but this is an ideal size. Um, my call now goes 57.5. To okay. the center, not to the top. Okay. To the top is like 50. Then they call it a 61. Because the, the crown mm -hmm. is, is all the way up. Okay. You know, because because every, they're always a measure from the top. Yeah, the every top. bike is different. You see on this blue bike here how much this extends? Look. That's at least two and a half centimeters. Mm -hmm. If you measure from here to the center of the tube, mm -hmm. that's almost three and a half centimeters from here to there. To there. That's because they have to put a lug to connect these tubes and protect that. Mm -hmm. These guys don't need to. They found a way to make them structurally strong without putting more things up here. That's why I don't measure to the top. Mm -hmm. I measure here. I mean, who cares about all that other stuff? This is the actual size. So your frame is 57.5, and that's what's in the specs you sent me. Mm -hmm. It's 57.5, according to the manufacturer, to the top. I always use the center to center. It's 56.5. So then you would measure from the center of this here to there to the center here. See, that's that's like a 60. I may have to go up a little bit. Well, maybe 59. If I put it on the ground, when we put it on there, it'd be easier to measure. Okay. You know what? Let me take it off the stand because what happens is I like that. This is almost horizontal. This top two. Mm -hmm. It's horizontal. Look at it. Yep. That's a horizontal top tube. So, I want to keep the measuring straight. So I'm going to measure here, straight to there. 59.5. So 59.5. That's why I think this stand might be fine. 59.5. First thing we're going to do, we we'll check the height mm -hmm. of all these spacers down there. Okay. And bring it down. But 59.5 is the length of your top two to here. The center. Center to center. 59.5. I don't remember what uh, the other bike was, but those are the things that you look at and you say, okay, it's 59.5. How much do I need to there? Mm -hmm. I never really measured your shoulder per se, but 59.5 and this stem is, let's see, 12. That's why I think you might be good. Okay, so that's good. All right, guys, I just wanted to give you some measurements, but this is the giant propel that, that, that Paul won, and we're going to put it together over time. Once the parts get here, we've got some of the parts. We're waiting on his bars. Um, we'll get them set up, and you'll see it on the road. Get your case in.